Hello there, welcome to a presentation on teaching by concept maps linking symptoms to diagnosis. So patients will often initially present to the clinical setting with a cluster of symptoms without actually knowing the condition behind it. And we as clinicians in the setting are expected to perform a bedside assessment and then we'll have a few differential diagnoses narrowed down to guide our investigations. And when we were students, as medical students, we often learn about disease conditions on their own, all from presenting signs and symptoms all the way to their treatments. And the struggle with that is that we might struggle with something called clinical reasoning. And the way we were taught in medical school may not have been the most helpful way because many of us know that many disease conditions will have many overlapping symptoms as well as the key diagnostic features. So clinical reasoning is being able to identify the key diagnostic information in a patient's history and being able to separate it out from the irrelevant details that patients share with us to, to narrow down to a few differentials when we are presented with a patient. So many, as a result, many students may struggle to figure out, say, what is wrong with a breathless patient on the ward because there's just too many differentials with shortness of breath, for example. So this project will aim to create a series of concept maps. So our concept maps will employ a symptom to diagnosis approach. Um, and this will in turn complement the disease to symptom approach that we learn in our medical textbooks and lectures in medical school. And this will help both our clinical educators and our students to develop a method of clinical reasoning using key diagnostic information to distinguish or separate between groups of diagnoses. And as a result, this will subsequently improve the quality of history taking when our students know what to look for. And a little bit about the logistics of our concept maps is we will initially create 50 concept maps on common presenting complaints. You may wonder what are concept maps. Each concept map will address one presenting complaint at the top and we will branch out according to a series of defining and discriminatory criteria to eventually reach groups of differential diagnoses at the end of the concept maps. So here are some examples. So this is a concept map tackling cough and it is initially separated or divided into its time course, which is acute chronic, and further divided according to its discriminatory criteria as to whether it is a wet or a dry cough. And it is further um, separated into its associated features. And with each associated features, you will get different groups of diagnoses at the end of the concept maps. This is looking at the complete concept map now. So concept maps have a lot of value in medical education. It can provide a systematic and a functional approach to common presenting complaints in real patients for both our medical students, our junior doctors, our budding clinicians who are still starting out in building their clinical acumen. It will foster a symptom to disease format that will complement and not replace the knowledge that is obtained on individual diseases that we learn from textbooks. And for us junior clinicians who are just starting out, it will act as a scaffold to organize, to, to retrieve vast amounts of information in the clinical setting. So the intended learning outcomes that we wish for both our students and the educators that will participate in this project is that it will encourage ways of comparing and contrasting different resources it will help them mobilize, interpret, and effectively manage a lot of information that's obtained in the patient's history um, in the clinical setting to actually solve the problem that they're faced with. And this will further complement the clinical acumen that we increasingly obtain when we see more and more patients in the hospital. And lastly, we hope this will help consolidate the link between clinical presentation of diseases and the actual pathophysiology that is driving it. So with that, if you have any questions, please contact this email that's listed below 
And thank you very much for listening to this.